Hey everybody, I'm Jim and you're watching Talking Vintage, brought to you by Decades Reclaimed Vintage Depot, located at 502 West Brennan Road, Lakeland, Florida, 33813. Today is show number 72. Um, yeah, you notice Warren is missing. He is on vacation up in Michigan. We will see him when he gets back in the fall. All right, today is June the 20th. It is National Ugliest Dog Day. So if you have an ugly dog, give him an extra treat. It's, national, it's also National Ice Cream Soda Day. I kind of like that one. And it's National Jimmy Day. So it's National Me Day because my mama calls me Jimmy. Okay, and birthdays today on June the 20th, we have Lionel Richie, John Goodman, and Nicole Kidman. All fine people wishing them a happy birthday along with everybody else who's celebrating a birthday today. Our next segment is What's in the Box? Normally, I would give some clues out and Warren would guess what's in the imaginary box. But since he's not here, I'm going to give you the clues and you get to guess in the comments. And then you'll find out if you're right next week when I reveal the answer. Okay, today, today's item it would be in a small box unless you had a whole bunch of them. It does not weigh much. One end is sharp while the other end is round is the second clue. Number three is each end does something different, but kind of the same thing. Unlike a pencil whose ends do the opposite. Okay, number four is you use it before you pour or eat or drink or at least some of the time. And number five, and this is the big one, this makes it easy. It will not open the door to a church, but some call it a church key. If you know what I'm talking about, if you know what's in the box, put it in the comments below. And next week you can find out if you're right. Last week was a plant. So if you guessed plant from last week, you were right. Okay, moving on to vintage trends. This is when we talk about what's trending in the vintage world. Anything and everything that is priced well is trendy now. So it's all about the price. If it's priced right, it's trending. Okay, what is not trending are overpriced decor items. People are redecorating right now. They're changing up whole rooms, but they want the decor at a good price. They want a deal. They want to find a sale. So. Make sure that your price to sell, and that's going to that's gonna bring us right into our next segment when we're talking about Vendor Corner. This is a time when we talk about things to help you out if you're a vendor in a store. And like I said, today we're going to talk about pricing, and we're going to break it down into different areas. Number one are different ways to price. Number one is you can't let what you paid for an item dictate the price. If you overpaid for an item, you can't overprice the item. If you overpaid, that was your mistake. You can't pass that on. You're just going to have to take it, sell it for what you can get for it, and move on. Okay? Number two is know your market. You can use eBay as a pricing tool. You could go in, see what people are selling for eBay. You really need to filter it and find out what the item sold for because you can ask uh, anything for anything. You can ask just enormous amount of money for a, an item that's not worth very much. You could do that and you'll find on eBay that the things that are there, what people are listening for is often overpriced. It's not what they're selling for. Filter your search, go down to sold and then check them out there. You can also, also use Google Lens, okay? It'll help you identify what the item is, but it'll also bring up a listing of prices. Again, that's what people are asking for an item. That doesn't necessarily mean it's selling for that. So be careful when you're using the selling platforms as a pricing tool. It's just a starting point for you, okay? Because you wanna take those prices or what they sell for, and then you want a price to sell. I often sell something cheaper so that somebody will buy it to resell it. I, first of all, when I purchase things, I purchase very inexpensively so that I have the ability to do that. Okay? Um, because if you don't sell it, you're not getting any money back at all. 
and then you can't you don't have the money to go out and buy the next thing so even if if, if I, I overestimate and I overspend I just sell the item even if I have to take a loss because I want the money back in order to go out there and buy the next thing which I might get very cheap and be able to sell for a lot of money and make a great profit so you have to price to sell be careful in pricing all right um moving on after pricing we are going to talk about well let's just recap last week we talked about branding as a vendor and if you're in a shop or whatever you need to go back and watch that show but if you're a, a booth owner you need to brand yourself and um, promote yourself okay so the first was branding and promoting yourself then it was pricing your items and then next week will be a different one okay just wanted to say that before we moved on to the joke what do you uh, <laughs> why do they sell snails at fancy restaurants because their customers don't like fast food oh that's so funny okay now moving on question and answering um, the question for today is do you like a bargain and do you shop the sale area in a store see how that kind of tied back into pricing and uh, we, this we also <laughs> those were the questions now the answers from last week nobody answered it so I won't go over the answers in closing uh, we want to thank everybody for watching our show I'm Jim Warren is your other host he's not with us but I know he thanks you for watching we come to you from decades reclaimed vintage depot located at 502 West Brandon Road Lakeland Florida 33813 you can check out decades right here on Facebook you can also check them out on the web at www.decadesreclaimed.com. And while you're there, that'll bring you back to Facebook. And you can check out our show on YouTube. We appreciate everybody watching. Have a wonderful day. Until next time, see ya.